Hello, my name's host Eric, and I am the host of Talking with Famous People. I'm here tonight with myself and famous person Hami and famous person Nandi. We've got a special guest appearance by famous person Hami Static. And I don't know what's going on with this. There we go. Oh, and INFP listeners here as well. Okay, so. What I have here is a 20 sided dice. How many I'm going to mute you for a second? I, I think I, I, it's a tough call. I'd say mute, mute unless you're talking so that way we don't get so much background noise. Okay. Got a 20 sided die. And I've got here this paper where I've got numbers of each of the types. So, which number it is. Now. I'm going to roll this dice twice, and that's the inner type relations that we'll talk about. Eighteen. You can't really see that. <laughs> it's eighteen. You guys trust me. All right, eighteen. That means it's a rollover because there's no type that's eighteen. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty is a rollover. Nineteen. Seven. Okay, let's look at this paper. This paper says number seven is ESTP. So one of the two types in this inner type relations tonight is going to be ESTP number seven. Now let's look at the second type. Seven again. But I don't want to do another uh, identity one. Let me try that. I'm going to nix that seven. Eight. Okay. There. Eight. All right. So eight on this paper is INFJ gets done again here, huh? ESTP and INFJ. Okay, so they're quadrant mates. We know that right off the bat. That's going to help make their lives a little easier, probably, being quadrant mates. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off my webcam for a second. What the people in the room are not going to see is this document that I'm bringing up onto the screen for the people at home which shows all the different types. So we're talking about in this case ESTP versus INFJ. ESTP here, INFJ, remember when we have to change the P and the J on the introverts, INF, INF, There it is, P. Okay, so we've got ESTP and INFP. Those are duals. That's duality. And INF, INFJ, I'm sorry, INFJ and ESTP are duals. Those are the types that should be get, getting together. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about duality, I guess, and how it works. Our types are, as I indicated, the ESTP and INFJ duels. If you are talking, I can barely hear you. No? Okay. So, here's the thing about the ESTP and INFJ. The ESTP is going to have a cognitive function stack of S-E-T-I-F-E-N-I. ESTP. They act, think, feel, and know the truth in that order. INFJ on the other hand is the flip side of that. They know the truth first, they feel second, they think third. So the reason that the INFJ and the ENTP get along so well is that 2-3 switch. ESTP and INFJ have the same 2-3 switch, but while the uh, ENTP and IF, INFJ might complement in some ways because of the differing truth reference and because of the differing uh, directionality of sensing, namely the ESTP and the INFJ both have SE and NI, whereas the ENTP has NE and 
SI. So for those two pairs, they're a better match, obviously, than the INFJ and the ATP because they see eye to eye on how to identify truth or the methodology through which truth is identified. And one of them, it's their biggest strength, it's their nature. The other one, it's in their conscious stack, but it's weak. It's their weakness. <coughs> uh, and the other way around, you've got the INFJ who's got SE in the fourth slot. They have a problem with taking action. They have a problem with uh, following through on actions in particular and on persisting in doing things. So they have a tendency to sort of get swallowed up into a little bit of an isolation or a, a bit of a, of a universe that's constrained by limited boundaries if certain circumstances happen to them. So the ESTP then would be obviously the ultimate uh, get out and do it kind of person to match up with the INFJ. It's easy for them to understand one another. The ESTP will instinctually see how the INFJ needs their their simple direct bam 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 at the world because the INFJ's bam 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 at the world is not simple and direct and it's not very bam bam at all it's sort of like muse muse affirm <laughs> it's kind of like that you know uh, it's not a particularly action very impaired but with that duality you're going to see INFJ's probably accomplish a great deal more if they were to have say an ESTP spouse than they would were they to have an ENTP spouse because the ENTPs and INFJs are likely to be lazy together and ESTPs and INFJs that's not the case they're likely to balance each other out perfectly so as I discussed in a previous video about the INFJ ENTP relationship the TIFE combo in the middle when they're reversed works really well because the the person with the feeling in the third slot feels a sense of relief and as though they are in safe hands in the company of this person who is stronger than they at feeling but at the same time concerned with uh, but at the same time presenting it through the same modality that the uh, ESP does which is thinking so they're going to be understanding feelings first, the INFJ, and then thinking about how to implement their their truths of feelings and where how to how to utilize their TI to establish position and status and maneuverability within society rather than for the sake of figuring shit out because they're NI they like to have their whole truths anyway whereas the ESTP is going to be uh, the opposite. It's going to be more like the ENTP thinking first and so the INFJ is going to have a lot to offer the ESTP in regards to making sure the ESTP re remembers to account for all the various variables in the world including people's feelings in order to maximize efficiency and effectiveness if nothing else. And then in that last slot remember the ESTP has NI which means they are subject to the is they're subject to grasping on to truths and then thinking they're bigger than they ought to be or that they're more encompassing than they ought to be and not really knowing which truths are big and small and and not really knowing uh, how to balance a sort of relativism that is implied by differentiation within the world and the absolutism that's implied by their NI that is clumsy in the fourth slot. So INFJ is going to be there to say, no, this is the direction. Now, these duels, I'm talking about it ideally being a ideally being a intimate relationship, a long-term monogamous relationship, then partners really have a chance to grow into one another and maximize and take advantage of each other's skills, especially if they go into the relationship 
knowing these things, I think. Because when I went into my relationship, I went in there not knowing how any of this stuff worked really at all. I knew I'm Myers-Briggs type, and that was it. And I'd never heard of cognitive functions before. And I spent most of my marriage like that. And as a consequence, I think uh, I had all sorts of conflicts that could have easily been avoided and explained if I had this model to reference at the time. I think it's really important that people get into relationships carefully, and I personally believe in the socionics intertype relations model pretty clearly. To me, it feels as though it accurately describes the dynamics of relationships between two people. Once again, though, I'll remind you, if you are looking for your dual, that supposedly these relationships are notoriously difficult to get started, that neither partner is going to see the other one as a viable option, really, uh, at first. And so it's worth looking out for them. That's all I have to say about the ESTP and INFJ dual relationship, a uh, relationship of duality in which they're meant to be together and they complete each other, basically. They complement all the other parts and they have none of the unconscious, all the same unconscious and all the same conscious functions. Thoughts, comments, any concerns, complaints, or other words from you, the visiting GTMers? Yeah, so I've read up on this, this relation. Um, of course, there are downsides, such as the INFJ might be overwhelmed by the ESTP's dominant extroverted sensing. They might be tired out by that because, you know, it's, like, constant and it, it'll definitely, like, wear them out. But it's good to, like, pull them out and to, like, do things. Is Hami saying? But, you know, it makes I, sense because at first the ESTP may come off. Yeah. Yeah. And then well, the INFJ... Hmm? I would suspect the INFJ calms the ESP down in the same fashion that the ISFJ calms the ENTP down. Okay, yeah. I, I don't know that's absolutely the case. I know the, the mechanism by which the ISFJ calms the ENTP down is pretty straightforward. It's, I really like your idea, let's do it a little bit safer. Yeah. yeah. But the I think it would be somewhat different for the INFJ and ESTP. It would probably be something like uh let's let's go do feeling and NI stuff. So, I don't know. Let's <laughs> let's discover the truths of other people's emotions together. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. But somehow they got to call be them interesting. down. Interesting. Yeah, I'd like to hear an ESTP and INFJ relation people in a relationship say, "Tell me how it. What's the mechanism that INFJ calms down the ESTP? I wonder if it's as clear cut as the mechanism of the ISFJ and the ENTP." Uh, any other thoughts, comments about this two, these two pairs? This this pair. Okay, well that's our first intertype pairing of the evening, the ESTP and INFJ duality. Yes, darling. Um, I, so I didn't end up getting food from anywhere, I just got a drink, and I forgot that I was going to get you food, but I, um, I'm going to get you food, and 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 I'm